Hey there folks, I'm retiring yet another team. This is my James UU team that dates back all the way to my PBR days, and I'm finally seeing it off uh, with a double battle. My first opponent is Luna874, who's actually faced my James team before, but back when uh, Luna faced my James team, it was a PBR team. So uh, yeah, we haven't actually had a battle since, so kind of nice to be battling again after all this time. So leads, is, leads off with an Absol. I was expecting just either Sucker Punch, Psychic, or Pursuit. That's Psychic, I'm sorry. Uh, Night Slash or Pursuit. Instead, Magic Bounces. I didn't even know they carried Magic Bounce. So already I am in a bad situation because I have two Pokemon who are weak to rot and no one to spin. And his Absol is going to get off a sub. I, this was actually a really bad switch anyway because had he attacked, Hugabug is really frail. And after the... I mean, this just was a really bad idea, as you're about to see, because on this next turn, he just goes for the Night Slash. Had he Night Slash the first turn, he would have taken me out then. Instead, he's going to take me out here. Really, the best move probably would have been to go out into Kazulu, as I do now. I'm guessing that he's sub Sword Dance, so I just got to keep on applying the pressure. Luckily, I'm not stupid enough to go for a Sleep Powder, although I know I was thinking it. So I go for an Earthquake, break his sub, and he's going to attack, but... I'm not seeing too much to fear because, uh, I mean, Tangrowth is so physically bulky. He gets a lychee boost, so it's actually really awesome, I think at least, that uh, the pinch berries, including I believe Custap, are now released in Gen 5. Yeah, Custap has got to be really fun on sturdy sets, uh, but I haven't actually seen it even in um, Pokemon Showdown. So anyway, yeah, even with the lychee boost, really not doing too much, so I am able to take out his Sazendora, by the way, huge name. Sazendora, if you didn't know, is the Japanese name for uh, Absol, so I managed to take him out. He now goes out into Roserade, and I make another stupid play. I was thinking that he'd just go for Sleep, pow uh, sleep Powder or something like that. Instead, he goes for Sludge Bomb. It's super effective stab, and my Tangrowth is dead, even though it does run quite a bit of special defense investment. I now go out into Mew. I'm thinking he's probably just going to switch out during the Psychic. In so I'm just going to go ahead and go set up, set up my Stealth Rocks. But he stays and goes for the Leaf Storm. So this is a fully offensive set. Excuse me, fully offensive set. Really, really screwing me over now. At this range of health, I'm not sure that I can take another Leaf Storm. So I'm going to go ahead and switch out. Go out into Arcanine. And here's where I really, really wish that Arcanine weren't banded. Because if Arcanine weren't banded, I could just go for the Flare Blitz uh, safely. But because it is, I know that he's got the Chandelure, I can't go for the Flare Blitz, and I'm instead going to have to go for one of my other moves. Uh, now, I'm banded, I, the, my move is Outrage, which when I saw that Arcanine finally got Outrage, I thought, oh my god, this is the coolest thing ever. But the bottom line is that there are enough Steel types running around that it's really not a great idea, because now I'm locked in for two to three turns. He's going to go out into the Troll Balian, which can easily set up on me now. And this just really sucks. Had I had function that move slot instead, I could have taken out Chandelure with the same prediction and then switched out. But instead, I'm locked into Outrage. I'm hoping for a two-turn Outrage. You don't often hear people want a two-turn Outrage, but here I really, really want that two-turn Outrage. Unfortunately, I get three turns, which means I'm still in. I go for the other Outrage, just not doing too much at all. And now he's gotten off a of Swords Dance. I'm confused. Gonna have to... Well, I really should have just spotted, but then again, he could have predicted that, gone for another sword stance, and that would have been really, really awful. He goes for a Thunder Wave, and I'm thinking, yes, this is awesome, because thanks to Synchronize, I'm gonna get him paralyzed, he'll be all slow and stuff, and even though I might lose my Mew, I'll be able to revenge kill him right easily, but he's got the Love Berry! Oh no! Ah! Completely wasted turn, and, well not wasted turn, but completely wasted, and Mew is now going to be completely wasted, so I've lost another Pokemon. I go out into Clank, and here I make a very, very bad play. I'm making lots of really, really bad plays in this battle. I should have gone for the Earthquake. Instead, I go for the sub. And yeah, at 40 HP, I don't have enough health to make a sub. So I'm screwed, and he's going to take him out with another Iron Head. I could have taken him out with Earthquake and maybe salvage this match. But alas, alas. Now I go out into Blake, my Arcanine. I've got no one left to do anything. So he's going to take me out with an Iron Head. No way I can survive that. Maybe if I had Intimidate instead of Flash Fire. Intimidate really would be the better ability on my Arcanine. But anyway, my last Pokemon is Tux. I can't take a close combat, especially one at plus two. So Tux is going to die as well. And he's swept me with a Cobalion. This wasn't a body deck bag because I did take out two of his Pokemon. But a 4-2 loss is still kind of sad. So 
I I thought about having that be my finale, but I, I thought, no, I really want to try again. So I went on the Smog on Wi-Fi Battle Finder. Luckily, there are tons of people there looking for UU battles. And my opponent is, let me look this up, the Dark Blitz 720. And so here we go. Um, looking at his team, I, I'm not really fearing too many of his Pokemon, but that Tornadus, I'm looking at that Tornadus and thinking, that Tornadus is going to be my downfall. I can just feel it. So I lead off with Mew yet again. As he leads off with Polygon, I think the worst he can do for me, do to me is U-turn, uh, and I don't think he's banded, so I'm not really thinking it's going to do too much damage. And as you see, he's almost certainly Scarfed, and that did less, well, just slightly more than a quarter, but really not very much, so I'm able to safely get off my Stealth Rock. And here goes that into Swampert. I really can't do anything against Swampert. I don't have Taunt. Uh, so it looks like he's going to be able to set up his entry hazards, but at least I'll have the switch out into Kazulu and I'll be able to scare him out the next turn. He actually goes for Earthquake. Not sure why, but I'm pretty happy about this, because now it means I'm going to scare him out. I'm not sure who's faster, uh, He because I haven't done any damage to him, so I haven't I couldn't see who did leftovers first. But uh, here I was printing him to switch out, and even if he didn't, putting something to sleep, putting Swamper to sleep would still be pretty awesome. I put his Zapdos to sleep, which is great, uh, although I would prefer some of his other Pokemon to be asleep, truth be told. I've got plenty of things to deal with this Zapdos. But his Zapdos is now asleep. He's going to go out into Hitmon Top, and I am going to go out into my Golurk because I'm thinking, well, there's a good chance I'll be able to... Uh, he'll be asleep for an upturn, that I'll be able to set up my sub, and I have Ice Punch on my Golurk. Anyway, it turns out he went out into Hitmon Top, so that's fantastic. He goes for Sucker Punch here, thinking I might be the Bandit's... Uh, I guess he... Yeah, I, I, never mind. Um, I managed to set up my sub, which is fantastic, because now I know I wall him, unless he has Foresight, I guess. He's going to go out here into Zapdos. I just go for the Focus Punch behind the sub. It's perfectly safe, because I wasn't... Well, even Roar, I think, actually has lower priority than Focus Punch. So I go for the Focus Punch. It does a decent amount of Zapdos. And now I'm thinking, at that, now I'm thinking, just go for the Ice Punch. I'm thinking he might not want to switch out again, considering I do have the Rocks up and he has... Well, he does have a Spinner, but I... I think with my spin blocker, it's going to be hard for him to spin. So I go for another Ice Punch, take out, not another Ice Punch, my first Ice Punch, take out Zapdos, and that is fantabulous because I am still behind the sub. And now I'm all back to almost full HP. So now I go out, he goes out into Swampert, I'm predicting him to Waterfall, Ice Beam, depends on the set. Uh, I go for the Focus Punch. And interestingly, he hasn't moved yet, which means he's gone for Roar. I thought that was a really strange move, and I kind of asked him why he did that, and he said he was predicting me to just keep on subbing. So, whatever, works for me, and this uh, switch out worked really well for me, because I've got Grass Knot on Tux, so I'm able to take out Swampert, I'm pretty sure uh, Swampert was there for Stealth Rock, and now he's got no one to set up Stealth Rock. So now out he goes out and Flygon, I'm going to want to switch out because I don't want to take another fight. Could Zulu walls a set for days unless he carries the fire type move? I know they often do, but even a fire blast running through a mix set shouldn't do too much because I do have a bunch of special uh, uh, defense investment. Holy crap, that U-turn did a lot because of that very unfortunate crit. And had it not been for that crit, I probably would have kept Tangrowth in just to, just to see what this guy was going to do. And I probably could have tanked it, but I'm not going to want to do that. So here I'm going to go out into Arcanine. I'm looking at his team. I don't... Arcanine's not going to be very useful. So I decide basically to fodder off my Arcanine. It's kind of strange to fodder off a uh, full hell HP Arcanine, but I was just looking at his team and thinking it really wasn't needed. So Arcanine goes down. Sorry, Blake. And now I get the free switch into Hugabug. I see that he's Life Orb, not Scarf. So that means I feel safe going... I, I know that I'll outspeed. Uh, and I go for the Thunder. Now, I know that he's Scarf, so not going to want to take an Earthquake. Go out into Mew, because... Well, actually, I really probably should have gone into Tango yet again. I figured maybe he would be onto me. Maybe he does carry a good fire move. So he U-turns yet again. All that Flygon is doing is U-turning this game. So now he goes out into Porygon yet again. And I'm thinking, okay, well... I think I'll just go for Roost. Uh, scout him out, maybe. I, I decided to go for Psychic. I'm not exactly sure, because he goes for the Dark Pulse. And I wasn't expecting him to carry the Dark Pulse necessarily, but it makes sense because there's so many ghost types in the, uh, in the game. So he takes me out and I've lost my Cleric. That's not nice. But anyway, I go out into Hugabug. I'm thinking at that range of health I should be able to take him out with a Bug Buzz. I'm hoping at least. And I do manage to take him out with a Bug Buzz. So that is a Porygon Z that is dead. I'm very glad about that fact. And he now goes out into Tornadus. Now, if he's running Jolly, he outspeeds me. 
If he's not running Jolly, then I outspeed him. I go for the Thunder, thinking, really, I've got no safe switches at this point. And I go for the Thunder, uh, as he went for the Prankster Substitute. And now, moment of truth time, his Acrobatic, he does outspeed me, and Flying Gem Boosted Acrobatics does take me out. Interestingly, without the Flying Gem, he would not have taken me out. So, even though Galvantula is so super frail. But, uh, actually, sorry, I think he would have taken me out of the couch I was doing, basically assumed item that's not... Yeah, so never mind. Uh, item that's not Flying Gem, but an item nonetheless. So anyway, I go for the Ice Beam just predicting the switch, or not predicting the switch, uh, just because it was a pretty safe mood move. I'm going to switch out. I'm not sure who's faster, uh, him on top or my um, Empoleon. I'm pretty sure actually my Empoleon's faster, but still, I was predicting the switch and I wasn't sure that I could take him out at that range of health. So, uh, great move for me, and I was thinking I'd probably wall him, unless he carries the Toxic, and he does carry the Toxic, and that's really too bad. But I'm able to get, get off a sub, so that's pretty okay. Uh, considering all the things that can happen here, I mean, I could go for the Focus Punch, but he does have Tornadus to resist that, although Tornadus isn't going to be like him taking that hit. So I do go for the uh, Focus Punch. He goes for the Sucker Punch, which is going to break my sub. That's okay. That's really fine. Uh, and that's what the sub is there for. So I go for the focus punch. It's going to connect. Hit him on top. Top is going to go down. Uh, and now I'm at a range where I'm thinking, okay, let's go for ice punch here because I'm pretty sure he's going to switch out. I'm really expecting him to switch out here. So he goes for sucker punch, and he is uh, uh, he was predicting me to sub, and he actually wondered why I didn't sub. Um, and I said, well, I, my health was too low, I, something would not have been a good idea. So here, I get the freeze hacks, but you know what else is hacks? That I got min damage. I will put up the calc and I will show you that that was min damage. And what that means is that uh, basically this hacks actually, I would have preferred to get max damage and take him out rather than, uh, than have the freeze hacks happen the way it did, because it means that I'm going to die here to, um, to poison, and had I not had that happen, he would have had to send someone else to take me out. And, oh well. Now he's down to two Pokemon, I'm down to two Pokemon. I go out into Kudzulu just because if I if I don't like the matchup, then I can switch out. I decide I'm going to stay in and go for the Sleep Powder. Now the correct move, considering the two Pokemon he's out left, would have been to go for the Hidden Power Ice, but maybe I was thinking that Hidden Power Ice wouldn't take out either of his Pokemon, but I'm not sure it definitely would, considering Flygon is 4x weak to it, and Tornadus is down to basically no HP, so I go for the Hidden Power Ice here. Luckily, my Sleep Powder didn't miss, and I'm thinking about this, I'm looking at the health that Kazulu's at, and I'm thinking, this is good game, because Kazulu can't take an Acrobatics, and he's probably running the Bulk Up set, which means that... Um, my... Uh, that he's got Super Power, which means that I don't think that Empoleon can take that hit. So I tell him, you know, we're swapping messages in the battle chat, and I basically say, good game, you're going to go for the superpower the next turn, and I'm going to lose this battle one turn. So I tell him, good game, and indeed, he goes for the superpower, and he's telling me, good game, and my health goes down, 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 and I survive on 39 HP! Woo! The crowd goes wild! Okay, I go wild. Uh, I actually do the calcs here, and I get my Pattaya boost for the first time, I think, since I've started running Pattaya. I actually do the calcs, and it turns out that he would have had to have gotten a crit in order to have taken me out. So that is the game. Great, great, great game. The Dark Blitz 720. That was an amazing battle. Hope you folks enjoyed it, and I'm going to miss this team a bit, but oh well. Stay tuned for the finale.